Okay guys, welcome back to my third video in my series of learning how to play D&D. My name is Rick, and today we are going to do a little bit of practical application. This is kind of a bonus video for the week. And uh, with me here, I have my two characters. This is Valdred. He is a level one fighter. And this is Carl the Test Wizard. And he is obviously a bard. No, he is a wizard. Uh, and before them stand five goblins. Uh, even though Carl does speak goblin, he was unable to befriend them, and they currently want to rip his face off. So we are about to roll for initiative. So we are going to start from the beginning. Now I am using roll 20 tabletop. Uh, this is just one of the many ways that you can play D&D. Uh, this is just the most convenient for me because I have all the books on here. So, uh, so we are going to roll initiative for each one. So... Don't mind the fact that I have to do a little bit here, so I'm going to roll initiative for this one. You're going to see it pop up. Okay. Goblins are rolling pretty well, considering the... Ooh, he got a natural 20. He got a 9. And the last goblin got a 7. Now, we're going to minimize them. Carl the Test Wizard... Is going to roll initiative. He got a 12. And then Valdred is going to roll initiative. And he got a 9. So I have no sweet clue why my turn order is so messed up. But for the sake of of making this simple we're going to pretend like Carl the test wizard rolled a 25 and that Valdred rolled a 26 so they got the jump on these poor hapless goblins and they are about to unleash some heck upon them there we go so now we start with the first of the order. Now, obviously, I made these guys bigger than five feet because every square in here is a five foot cube. I made these guys bigger just so they're easier to see. So he gets 30 feet of movement. So he is going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and uh, 25. So he's going to end his movement right here in front of this goblin. And Valdred, who is. Being groomed to be a knight is eventually going to have a lance, but currently I want him to use his longsword. So he is going to swing at this goblin, which, as you can see on here, the green number is their health, and the blue number is their AC. I just did this to make it a little bit simpler for calculation, so I know when he swings at the goblin, the goblin has an AC of 15, and he has 7 health. So currently, he has all 7 of his health, and Valdred has all 13 of his. So Valdred is going to swing his longsword, just like that. And now over here, he swung, and a 14 unfortunately does not hit. So it automatically rolls damage for me just to save a little bit of time. But Valdred uh, charges forth on his mighty steed and swings his two-handed uh, longsword forth. But unfortunately, the goblin is just short enough that as he swings it, the goblin can deflect his sword enough not to be cut by it. Being that that is the end of his turn, we go down next to Carl the Test Wizard. Carl, who's a little more wise than Valdred, is going to... Oh, sorry here, I'll make sure we understand where we're going here. He is going to move his full 30 feet to right about here. And he is going to, when we open Carl's sheet up, here are all his attacks... And it looks like when we go to his spells, he has everybody's favorite, Burning Hand. So it is a 15-foot cone from himself. So when we look at Carl the Test Wizard, that means when I take my little drawing and do freehand, does it? No, it doesn't show. Actually, this is probably the easiest way to go. So it goes in a... It goes 15 feet out. So 5, 10, 15... So like that, 
15 feet, and back to him. So when he casts this, he gets in all three of their squares. So he is going to cast Burning Hands at first level because that's the only spell slot he has. So now he has shot forth fire from his hands and all three of these goblins have to try and jump out of the way or they are going to take 11 fire damage. So this is a potentially fatal blast coming from Carl at these goblins. So each of the goblins is going to take their turn. Whoops, I should unselect that. So we're going to go with this first goblin right here. He is going to try and make a dexterity saving throw. And he critically failed with a three. You can see it's red, which means that he got a one. Which means that he was burned up in the fire. Whoops, wrong button. He was burned up in the fire and perished. The second goblin rolls an 18. So he is able to get out of the way. Now, mechanically, it does not say when you make the saving throw that you escape the space, mostly that you just get out of it. But I like to move them just a little bit just to show that they did, especially on dexterity, because that means that they moved out of the way in time. So the third one is going to roll. and He got a 14, which let's check here real quick. His spell save is 13. So two of them passed, but when we look on here, it says they take 3d6 fire damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful. So if they were going to take 11 damage, that means that half of that would be five and a half. So we have to go down. So each one of them has two health remaining. Meaning that they are both... very injured. So that being said, let me wipe this off the map here. So one goblin has perished, two of them are almost dead, and the last one is still alive. He seems like he is hiding in the bushes over here. So the next goblin to go would be this guy right here. He is going to move forward five, ten feet to Carl, and unfortunately for Carl, it looks as though he got a little too close when he did this. So Carl is going to be swung at by the goblin, who looks like he has a scimitar, and with his scimitar he's going to swing forward, and he is going to get a six. Now, Carl's armor class, when we look at it, it's going to be a 12, so anything 11 or lower will not hit him. So the goblin, uh, though very burned, charges forth at Carl. And as he swings his scimitar forward, Carl very easily just uh, shirks his shoulder and the goblin misses. So that will be his turn. So next up is the goblin right here. He is dead. Uh, we will take him out of the turn order just to save some clerical stuff. Uh, the second goblin is going to emerge from the bushes, and he is going to attempt to swing at Carl once more. With his, and he scores a 17, which is a hit. Now, I didn't have this roll the damage, just so I can show you. So, he rolls 17, and now he does 1d6 plus 2 piercing, slashing, slashing damage. Slashing damage. So we're going to go over here and roll 1d6. He got a four, so a four plus two, six. And it looks like Carl, just like the goblins, is not having a very good time. So Carl, as he uh, nimbly escapes from this one, gets overconfident as this next goblin emerges from the bushes and runs him through with his scimitar. Uh, Carl has lost a lot of blood, but he is still standing. So next up we have this goblin right here. And though he is burned, he is going to charge at Valdred, and he is going to attempt to swing at him. So with his scimitar, wow, he rolled very high. He rolled an 18, because he has plus 4 to hit. So he is going to do 1d6 plus 2 to Valdred. Oh, he's very lucky that he did not hit Carl with that, or he would have killed him in one shot. So Valdred, uh, on his mighty steed, uh, charged forth and swung at the first goblin. 
but soon finds himself bogged down by the other one, and Valdred has taken half his health. So next up, and lastly, is this goblin right here. Now he is going to swing at Valdred, and a 14, check if his armor class, is lower than a 17, so he does not hit. So he swings at Valdred, who has just taken a nasty cut to his leg, but he misses just to, uh, as Valdred moves to the left. So now we start over from the top, and Valdred is going to attempt to cut down the full health goblin because he thinks he has a better chance against the other one. And he is going to swing his sword, and he is going to roll a natural one. He has failed. Uh, the blood loss has caused him to uh, more or less lose focus. And now he is going to have to fight for his life against those two. So next up is Carl. And Carl, although very hurt, is going to figure out what he needs to do here. So Carl, calling upon his spells, he looks... And he sees that he has absolutely nothing except for burning hands to do damage with. So Carl is going to use a firebolt to try and kill this goblin who is injured in front of him. So he will cast firebolt, and it will hit. A firebolt, when we look at it, should be 1d10 fire damage. So he is going to hit him, and thankfully he kills him. He fires that firebolt straight into the goblin's chest, ending its life. It falls down dead, and that is Carl's turn. So next up, this goblin is dead. He's gone. Now, here's where the danger comes in. Here's where everyone is at the edge of their seat. The next goblin is going to attempt to swing his... well... Yeah, we'll say He swings his sword at Carl, and he hits. There's a plus two to his hit, so we know for sure that Carl is going to be down. So, Carl has taken his damage, and he is at zero health. That means that on the next turn, he will have to fight for his life. He will have to roll death saving throws to see if he makes it. Now... The other two goblins are going to attempt to attack Valdred. The first one does not hit him. He swings with his sword, but unfortunately he is so burned he has trouble moving at such a speed to even hit Valdred. And the second one hits him. Will this be the end of our heroes already? Will they ever get a chance to redeem themselves? He swings with his sword. And he deals 8 points of damage, de-horsing de uh, the knight and ending both of these adventurers' uh, lives. Unfortunately, uh, I am in the wrong setting. Let's escape from me. There we go. Unfortunately, they did not make it. But, what hoe is this? It appears as though... Another one of their party was hiding in the bushes, and out, I'm trying to remember which one it is, it is Sigismund. Sigismund comes out from the bushes, and would like to avenge his party members. So as you can see, Sigismund is a war domain cleric, and he is going to run forward. Eh, the wrong one. He is going to run forward, and he is going to cast Healing Word at 60 foot range. And he's going to use it as a second level. On Carl. So Carl regains 4 health and gets back to his feet.
This shouldn't be two, it should be four. I never took his health out. Sorry, my roll 20 apparently is a little slow right now. So Carl gets back to his feet. <gasps> Air filling his lungs as some of his wounds heal upon themselves. And Sigismund draws the attention of the goblins to the south. So it is back to Carl's turn. Because we are going to throw Sigismund in. Oh, I... Nope, there it is. Okay, just kidding. So Sigismund is going to roll for initiative coming in. And he rolled a 7, which makes sense because he actually just went right after that goblin. So that's okay. So Carl is going to attempt... He is quite desperate at this point, and he wants to end this engagement, especially with the goblin in front of him, so he is going to cast Burning Hands at this goblin. He's going to use his other spell slot to try and end this goblin. So he will cast Burning Hands at first level using his other spell slot. And it looks like Ooh, he did 10 damage, so if he can, if this goblin fails at saving throw, it will die. Apparently exited out of goblin, there we go. So this goblin is going to jump. And he was dexterous enough to get out of the way, but he still takes half damage, leaving him burned, just like his friends, whoops, not five, two. That's better. Leaving him almost dead. And burnt to a crisp once more. So now, this goblin, he's looking a little scared. We're going to see. This is just my own rules, but I like to check sometimes. Is he wise enough to say, oh, he is wise enough. He's wise enough to see that this is not going well for them. And he is going to start running away. So we see that goblins can run 30 feet. He's going to start running back into this quarry here where he can try and hide somewhere. Now, the next goblin in line is right here. Seeing that Sigismund has entered the combat, he's going to swing out at him. And he got a natural 20, which means that he gets to double the damage of his weapon attack. So he is going to do 2d6 plus 4 damage to him. So he does 11 damage to Sigismund, which, unfortunately, I did not prepare Sigismund here. Give me one moment. So we have to make Sigismund him. His HP. And his AC. So we know that he just took 11 damage. Come on now. Oh, I can do math, I promise. There we go. So Sigismund charges in, and while he is focusing on Carl, he ends up running straight into the blade of the first goblin he sees. And the second one is going to move around to attempt to attack him as well. He is going to swing, and with the 19, he hits him. So, he is going to roll damage. You know, it just occurred to me that, actually, I did math wrong. He should actually be at 4, because it's 11 damage he took regular, plus 4 extra. So, Sigismund is actually almost on the verge of falling down. So... The second goblin is going to swing. Three plus two is five, and Sigismund, their avenger, has fallen, leaving only the wizard left. It is apparently a very tough time, and unfortunately Sigismund never got a second turn. So, he is going to make his first death saving throw. So, on your character sheet... 
you see that there is test save success and failures. So the way it works is if you get three successes, your character is stabilized. They still have zero health, but they will not die from their injuries. If you get three failures, that means that your character has died. The only way to resurrect them at this point is to use something that causes resurrection. Something like Revivify or Raise Dead. Something along those lines. Death saves are quite simple. Uh, 1 to 9 are, or 1 to 10 are failures and 11 to 20 are successes. So, with a 7, he has gotten his first failure. Carl the Test Wizard Seeing that his comrade is down, but also not wanting to get blasted by these goblins, is going to move absolutely as far away as he can, and he is going to attempt to hit this goblin with a firebolt, considering he is out of... You know, I've missed... It's funny, I missed Valdred. He's going to make a death saving throw after this. We're going to throw a firebolt, and it is going to hit... So that is 1d10, and he rolls max damage. He absolutely obliterates this goblin. This goblin is toast. So next up, we're going to go back in time, since I have forgotten to have Valdred make two death saves, saving throws at this point. He's going to pass, and oh! He got a nat 20 on his death save, which means he automatically succeeds. He is now stabilized. So, even though Valdred is at zero health, he will not die from his injuries. He is incapacitated. So I like changing that now to like this. So next up... is this goblin up here. And like I said, he has had enough of this. He is burnt to a crisp, and he is going to flee the battlefield, leaving altogether. So, this goblin is now dead. That remain leaves one remaining, and he is going to charge forward. Oh, and despite Carl's best efforts, the goblin is right here with him. He is going to... Make the most dramatic scimitar swing. Oh, and he's gonna hit him. He has one chance. Can he low can he roll low? Oh Praise the sun. He has swung and he has barely clipped him, leaving Carl just barely conscious. Now it all comes down to this. Sigismund is going to make his next death saving throw. Which he is a second failure. Carl, brimming with arcane power, very upset at the death of his comrades, is going to cast Firebolt once more. And he is hit with a 21, and it comes down to this. The moment we've all been waiting for. Can Carl put the beast down and save his friends? Oh. In his frenzy to try and knock down the goblin. He has scored a good hit to him. But the goblin still stands. Menacingly. Even though it is so short. It comes forward and it is going to swing upon him. And it... It takes the firebolt to the chest at that moment, throwing it off balance and moving its sword out of its hand. It, gr it grasps to it as it flies through the air and it barely holds on to it. I, I do hope everyone knows just for this sake that I am not making any of this up. These are all real rolls. Uh, so Carl is going to try and hit him again. And a 14. Does it hit? Goblin has an armor class of 15. It does not. So the goblin, trying to rebuttal, swings forth, and it misses once more. This is going to be the longest battle in history, folks. Carl, 
has scored the hit. Can he do it? Can he avenge his friends? And he does. The goblin falls dead to the ground. But not before Sigismund has to make one last death save. And he saves. Carl, concerned for his friend's well-being, is going to run over to his savior. Can he make it in the round? We will say he has dashed there. And he feeds his friend a healing potion. Reviving him up to... A grand whopping four health. Soon afterwards, Sigismund, using his other spell slot, is going to cast Cure Wounds upon Valdred, raising his health up. They've defeated the goblins, and they rightfully loot the corpses to see if there's anything of value. On them, they find 25 silver pieces, several ramshackle-looking sets of armor and weapons of leather make. And other than that, they find the clan sigil of the bugbear of the region, Snarltooth. Thank you, everyone, for this practical demonstration. It was quite the story to behold because I didn't know what was going to happen either. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.